You can write her and, yeah, and send that information. Okay, a couple of announcements. Uh, the Alabama Inquirer Commission, as you folks know, Judge Roy Moore is a good man, he's an honorable man. And we need to take a stand for Judge Roy Moore right now. We really do. I called and I talked to these people, and uh, the woman that is prosecuting him, she reminds me of that woman from Baltimore. That, uh, oh, dear. Uh, she, uh, she's a... Huh? Prosecutor. Yeah, the prosecutor. She's, she's, uh, they describe her as vicious. And I've called down and I've talked to them, and I, and I let them know. I let them know very clearly that Judge Roy Moore, his integrity is far above uh, the others on that bench, those that are out to prosecute him. And I let them know that also that uh, we, uh, well, I, I told them what I, what I often say here. It used to be prostitutes wore short, short skirts and low-cut blouses. Today, many times they wear black robes there. <laughs> Yeah, I let him know flat out, and I said, I don't, you know, you'd like to talk some more about this. I called him, talked to him twice. The one lady says, boy, we've been getting a lot of calls. And I told him, if I get my way, you're going to get a lot more. Okay. So Amen. they're going to take him to court on the 28th, and I'm thinking, I'm talking to some others, we might just get a group, a, a, a bus, and take a bunch of pastors down to uh, to. Alabama to stand up for him. In fact, I'm communicating. We may have some signs made up. He's he oh, he's the only one that, that's obeying the law. Amen. He is the Supreme Court Justice. Alabama has a constitution, and Article 10 or the Tenth Amendment makes it very clear that the federal government only has the authority delegated to it by the state. The state of Alabama did not delegate the authority for the federal government to come in and say. You have to let uh, peeping times and perverts go into little girls' bathrooms. Okay, and so, folks, you got to take a stand somewhere. Right. Amen. 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 That's kind of what my message is all about this week. With that, so also don't forget this coming Saturday, we're having the uh, film fest here, and we've got we're going to have for you folks that that aren't aware of all of the. All of the corruption in the Clinton, the history of the Clintons. We're going to start back and do about four hours of the history of the criminal activity in the Clintons. And you take a close look. And this is who, who this is the best they can do to run for president. Those, uh, these are people that have put themselves above the law. And so we're going to do that this coming Saturday at Film Fest. I would encourage you to be here. Now, a lot of you that were here the last time and uh, you wanted that film Utopia, we didn't have any, we were out of them, we have them now. We have, in fact, we have a good supply of these DVDs. So, that's coming up, that's this Saturday. Is that 12 to 5 or something? 1, one, to, one to 6. 1 to 6. 1 to 6 this Saturday. And then, uh, also, on the 28th, we're going to have a picnic over and we're going to baptize, and we've got a, a couple that are going to get married out there on the 28th. So, anyhow. Uh, and and uh, Jimmy, while I'm doing them, while I'm married and baptized, maybe I'll just hook the two of you up to them. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a fine place. Yeah. No, nothing like being embarrassed by the preacher. But, uh, yeah, that's it's going to be at our place. Morning. But one thing about these people, every man in this church, when they do get married, it'll be to a woman. Amen. <laughs> that's the way we used to do it. Amen. Years ago, huh? <clears throat> Already. Any other announcements before we get started? Yeah. I do. Um, you know, um, I had to go. I guess this uh, one particular. Uh, preacher uh, last year, like when um, Kim Davis had, you know, stood her ground in, in um, Kentucky, 
Yeah. Um, now, this preacher, he, uh, you know, uh, is fond of ears ministries, and uh, if you if you check him out, Christian disobedience, you know, he has uh, had a nerve to shame Kim Davis. Uh, for taking the stand, and I went after G. Craig Lewis for that, you know, because yeah. you know uh, he gonna say, "Oh, she was under law. She 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 uh, needed to resign." So I mean, hey, I mean, this is this is where is that? You go always go have carnal Christians. We'll go against a real true born again Christians that takes a stand. Right. Well, you have some carnal Christians, and a lot of them are just. Ministers of the devil. Yeah. It's apostate. Yeah, John. Pastor, how many uh, Supreme Court justices does Alabama have? I think they have nine. Nine. And he's the only one that's standing up. Okay. Oh, no, I was thinking of this Judicial Committee. Supreme Court, I think they have seven. I'm not sure. But, uh, Alabama, <clears throat> but this Judicial Committee has nine judges on it. And the three that are on the panel that are brought the the charges are all Democrats, all registered Democrats. Yeah, but what Comies. I'm saying of the, of the seven Supreme Court justices in Alabama, only Judge Ray Moore is refusing to do that same sex no, from what, I, from what I understand, out of all of them, there was only one that was against him out of those. The rest were, were with him, yeah. Oh, okay. So. That's encouraging. This is the this is an outside group, what they call judicial. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mark. What day were you planning going down to the? What day is the court inquiry thing? Or oh, the, his his. his <coughs> he, they're having a trial. They're putting him on trial the 28th of September. Oh, oh so September. So I'm trying to coordinate it with okay. some of the other leaders in there because we want to get our, get on the okay. same page. Okay. With things. A lot of things can happen between now and then, and so I, what I would have to do is I'd have to, uh, depending on how many pastors I can get to want to go with us, they don't have to be pastors either, but uh, that would be probably either, either a couple 15 passenger vans or maybe one of those precious cargoes. So but depending on, so when I get closer I'll find out, I'm trying to work with the other guys down there to see what's happening. Any other questions before we get into the main message? Okay. All right. As you see, the title of the message today is God is Angry with the Wicked Every Day. Good morning. We're coming to you this morning from Doers of the Word Baptist Church. 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio, and our zip code is 44065. You're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That's 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. And uh, I just want to give a message right here from the, the start that I have not been hearing much from our listeners in this area, and, and uh, we have to take this in consideration when we decide which stations we're going to stay on and which stations, uh, you know, we're going to have to drop. So I would like to hear from you folks out there in the Tampa, Ocala area. The title of the message this morning is God is Angry with the Wicked Every Day. And we're going to be reading from Psalms uh, chapter 7 today. O oh Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Unless he tear me. My soul like a lion, render it in pieces. Well, there is none to deliver. O oh, Lord, my God, if I have done this, if there be any iniquity in my hands, if I have rewarded evil unto him that was at peace with me, yes, if I have delivered him that without cause is mine enemy, let the enemy persecute my soul and take it. Yea, let him tread down my life upon the earth and lay mine honor in the dust. Selah. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies, and awake for me to the judgment that has commanded. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore return thou on high. 
The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me. O let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just, for the righteous God prieth the hearts and the reins. My defense is God which saveth the upright in heart. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, if he will, wet his sword. He hath bent his bow, and has made it ready. He hath also prepared for him instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against his persecutors. Behold, he travailed with iniquity, and conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit, and digged it, and has fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing with his own come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Well, here, King David who wrote this psalm in response to the slanderous accusation of those that had claimed that he was trying to kill uh, King Saul. And it kind of reminds me here how lately they've been, uh, the, the wicked, the evil, the media has been trying to claim that Donald, Donald Trump is uh, out there um, calling on the people, the Second Amendment people, to kill Hillary. I mean, <laughs> that's an amazing, but that's what you could expect. In fact, David asked God to look <laughs> upon his heart and to judge him according to his righteousness and integrity. Like today, in David's day, it was a time of, of great evil and injustice and corruption. David knew that even though he was being treated unfairly, that he could depend upon God who was totally just and fair to be with him. In fact, if you turn over to 1 Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 24, I just want to read you verses 9 through 11. We read this. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou man's words, say, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord hath delivered thee, in, thee today into my hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, and my eyes spread thee, and my eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth mine hand against thy Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see you, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in it that I cut off thy skirt of thy robe. And kill thee not, know thou that, and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand. I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. Well, what happened was old Saul had taken refuge in a cave for rest, and David was hiding in that cave. And Saul was out with his army looking to find David and kill David. And while he was in there, David was, was close enough to him that he cut a portion of his uh, skirt, they called it in those days, and kept that to show Saul he could have taken him out any time he wanted to. Okay? But he didn't. But there were those uh, in Saul's camp that were spreading the rumor that David was out to kill Saul and that he had said so. If you turn over to Isaiah chapter 42, in Isaiah chapter 42 here, it's an interesting thing because if you listen very carefully, you're going to see that in verses 1 through 9, that God is actually saying that he is allowing us to help carry out the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Great Commission. And this is in Isaiah 42, some 700 years prior to the birth of Christ. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect, in whom my soul delighteth, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment into truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for those law. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretches them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, 
and the Spirit to them that walk therein. And I, the Lord, call thee in righteousness. And I will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant for the people, for the light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes and bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness in the prison house. I am the Lord, this is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and the new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you that. Well, again, here, that, that was way in the future already talking about us having the, the honor to be able to, to be used to carry out the Great Commission. So, let's turn over to Turn over to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Now, we know that the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. But he's angrier with some people than he is the other. And he tells you that. And here in Matthew chapter 23, I want to read verses 13 through 15. So when the Lord called them hypocrites, meaning play actors, don't you think that Hollywood should maybe take notice of that? Okay, I'm not sh uh, sure who should be the most offended being compared with each other, the, the apostate religious leaders or the actors in Hollywood. And uh, probably neither one of them has a sense to know the difference. Anyhow, Matthew 23, verse 13 He's talking to the religious leaders here. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. So he's making it very clear here. Now he uses the word damnation, which has a stronger condemnation than condemnation. And so, he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him two four mold the child of hell than yourselves. That's a pretty serious charge. Listen. Uh, getting one more from God is not a good thing, folks. When you get three, you're in more trouble than you can imagine. And so he's telling them that their, their punishment is going to be greater. It's going to be greater. Now, the other the thing there, when he calls them hypocrites, literally that word means play actor. That's what the word hypocrites means, play actor. Uh, in the early days, going back in the 18, 19, early 1900s and that, Outside the theaters and the marquees, you would often see performing hypocrites would be out there, meaning play actors. Okay. And again, today, uh, I would imagine all of those in Hollywood are going to be in line for a lot of those woes. <laughs> so today there are far more false teachers in Ireland than there are men of God out there. And we, we see, if we go to Galatians chapter 1 and verse... Uh, 6 through 10, we read this. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ to another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which is preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, this is very, very strong. This is very strong. Uh, even on the radio, uh, if I were to go out and say, let you be accursed for what you're doing, and I probably will be when I read this, because there are so many apostate preachers. Well, I'm going to tell you, normally the news media would jump all over that. And they kind of leave me alone nowadays because 
we had some battles years ago, and, and I won them. I stay with them. And, uh, you know, that's what we have to do. We have to stand like Christian soldiers with our eyes upon the cross. Amen. And hold our ground. We, we are commanded, one, to be obedient to the Lord. Two, to resist tyranny even unto death. Okay? And three, to hold back the Antichrist system. But the first one is the Great Commission to what? To preach the gospel in season out, evangelize, baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's what we're commanded to do. That's what we as Christians do. That's what we who hold a higher standard. And he says here, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. Mm -hmm. For I do now persuade men for God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have to make up our minds. We're going to please the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. <coughs> I want you to go over to Jeremiah chapter 23. <coughs> and in Jeremiah chapter 23, we take a look at just how uh, angry the Lord is with the apostate preachers today. Uh, verses 1 through 4. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and have driven them away, have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. You know, in this country, church attendance is at an all-time low. I mean an all-time low. Yeah, mm, sad but true. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries, whether I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds. And they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. And then if you go to verses 11 through 19, uh, he shows you that he's a little even angrier yet. For both prophet and priest are profane, yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, said the Lord, wherefore their way shall be Unto them as slippery ways in the darkness, they shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and cursed my people, Israel, to err. I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem, a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. And none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them as unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof of Gomorrah. Mm. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. Far for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart. What we call that today, folks, is prosperity preaching. And not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, Ye shall have peace. And they say unto every one of his walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. And this is exactly today. With all the things that's happening and the prosperity preachers, do you hear them preaching repentance? Do you hear them preaching? Listen, there's only one remedy for sin. There's only one thing that can that can stave God's hand of judgment upon this nation like it did in the days of Jonah and Nineveh. And that's repentance, folks. Amen. Second Chronicles 7, 14. You don't hear the prosperity of the preachers. They keep telling the people, look, God loves you. 
He wants to just give you, he wants you all to have a Mercedes. He wants you all, you know, to all live in luxury, right? All you got to do is put money in this offering plate and, and, and just believe and he'll bless it 300 fold. Used to be they would say 100 fold, now it's up to 300 fold. <laughs> Inflation. <Okay>. Um, <laughs> this is the prosperity preachers out there today. People, you know, because because of biblical illiteracy and because of, of their own greed, people say, look, I know what it is I want to hear. I want to hear what God will do for me. Like Joel Osteen's wife said, it's not about God, it's about us. Wrong ass. Boy, is she in for a rude awakening. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. A real rude awakening. I want you to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Because he talks about these preachers. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4 says this, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. That word bear, anachomal, in the Greek, means to, doesn't mean to, to, Bear the way we it means to push back against, mm -hmm. push back against. Okay, and that's what he's telling you. Verse twelve. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that therein they glory, that they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Well, going back to verse 12. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that they are in their glory, that they may be found. In these, the Apostle Paul is saying, look, these apostate preachers, these false preachers, these hirelings, they're out there trying to compare themselves. They're saying, yeah, they're, they're men of God just like we are. And they're not. They're ministers of Satan. Mm -hmm. On C-SPAN yeah. yeah. here uh, on, on Friday featured an apostle, an apostate uh, black preacher. He was promoting a perversion of the Bible. He was promoting the socialist gospel. Which is, and it was an amazing thing because the host of that program, she, she was calling him reverend. I mean, she was just being so, uh, giving him so much reverence. Here's a guy, had, and she probably had no idea at all that this guy is, is we just described him Apostate. right here. Yep. Um, he was promoting the social gospel, which as we read is not a gospel. He was saying that if, if you're, if you're pro-life, that's okay. But then you should also honor and tolerate those that are pro-death. No. No. <laughs> no. Of course, no. he used the politically correct terminology of pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Pro-death. And folks, I can guarantee you the opposite of life is death. Just like the opposite of good is evil. Right. The opposite of the right is the left. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Mr. Warren Harbour fits into that category of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, he also thought that Christians should accept the lewd, gross, belligerent transgressors. I don't think so. Now, the lewd, gross, belligerent transgressors today are known as the LGBT. Right? No. Not. So, right? Well, yeah. they have their parade and everyone's right. in Right. They want to give us, they say, this is how we want to be uh, addressed, so then we just give them the truth. And that's what it is. It's lewd, it's gross, it's belligerent, and they're transgressing God's law. Amen. I want to go over to 1 Peter in chapter 4. And in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian... Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on that behalf. Look, you're going to be told over and over and over again. This is why one of the jobs of a pastor is to feed his sheep okay, yep. and to prepare his people. That's right. 
That's and right. he feeds them on the Word of God, God's truth. Prepare them so that right. uh, when these times come on them, uh, that they don't think that some strange thing that exactly. for some reason uh, they're being persecuted because they're evil and they're wicked. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin in us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Well, judgment has been taking place in God's house for a long time, folks. For a long time. And this is why we have the, the apostate church out there today. And if the righteous garrison, now listen. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you these carnal Christians, if you will, uh, and these so many of the Philippines of, of these entertainment centers exactly. yep. should really, really, I mean, this, this should send shivers up their spine. It should. This is real. It's going to hit them once. I mean, you know, here a couple of weeks ago, uh, I took a fall. I was out there and, and uh, I got my left foot caught up on a, a brick patio brick. And normally, what do you do? You just put the other foot out and it catches you. But now, uh, the other foot that I put out, I caught it up on a cord that someone had struck. Wow. Yeah. An electrical cord. So folks, when you get both feet caught, uh, and I can feel myself going down hard. Boom. And, and when I hit, especially on my, I still feel it on my chest. You see, that came up on me suddenly. Very, I did not expect that. Okay, it was a very, very rude awakening. Okay, and uh, if Kevin had been looking out the window, and I would have said, "Did you see that?" And if he would have said, "No, do it again," I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have done it again. No. Tom. Yeah, that's your time. Yeah. Would be but anyhow, proud. and this is how this is going to hit people. It's going to hit them here. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? There's so many out there that think somehow they're saved because they were baptized as a child or that uh, they're, they're in a prosperity church. And as was preacher said to me one day, when we were arguing about Rick Warren's uh, purpose-driven uh, cult. If God's not in it, why is it prospering? Huh. Well, you know, Hugh Hefner in the Playboy magazine was prospering. Well, do I don't think God know. was in that, was he? No. But anyhow, wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him, the well-doing as unto a faithful creator. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. In other words, you don't do it uh, simply out of the the fear of God, that if you don't do it, then God will punish you. You do it because you feel that it's an honor to be called of God, to be to, to minister and to lead His people. Amen. It's an honor to be called of God, who chose us. And you don't do it for money's sake. Mm -hmm. And for these, and these prosperity preachers, again, it's going to hit them hard. It'll hit them so hard. Because you see, what happens, as it says in Second Timothy, we're not deceiving and being deceived. <coughs> yeah. After a while, they start believing their own sermons. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon, when they start trying to convince people, okay, uh, that that this is what Christianity is all about, gaining material things, they start believing their own rhetoric. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Now, you know, that's another thing. Is some of these, uh, you have almost cult-like. You know, the, the, our obedience is to the Lord. Amen. Our obedience is to the Lord. What do you know? Well, you read God's word, the Bible. That's where you know what the obedience is. But He tells you, 
in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 and 17, to listen to those that have the authority over you, to listen to those that God has given. That means they're pastors, to listen to your pastors. But it also makes it very clear, neither as lords over God's heritage. I had, I had a friend who was a pastor. I'd known him for years. I had no idea that he held such control over his congregation. And until and one day I found out when uh, his congregation, when, when a, a young couple came uh, to talk about uh, being involved in the Right to Life movement. And I told them, here's what we need. And they said, well, we'll, we'll ask the pastor uh, and see what he says. I said, well, he'll, he'll have no problem with that. I mean, the man actually sat with me on a board of Right to Life. They said, oh, we don't do anything, okay. We, we, you know, nobody in our church does anything without getting his permission. He won't let us. Oh, man. That's what he mean. That's wrong. He said, well, uh, we wanted to buy a house. We have to get his permission. He'll tell us what house we can afford. If we want to buy a car, we get his permission. He tells us what kind of car we should buy. That's Because he tells you right here that we're to listen to what he says. That's scary. And I thought, you know what? Mm -mm. I, I'm afraid if, if I start talking to these young people, they're going to get confused. And I told them, I said, you sure that's what the Bible teaches? Oh, yeah. Okay. The Bible doesn't teach you that. Right? Okay. No. Here, I just read it. Okay. Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. So what do you do? You go to the pastor and you ask advice. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? But then in, in matters of the home, the, the man is the head of his house. And in matters Amen. inside of his house, that's up to the man. Amen. That's right. Right? That's right, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The woman is the queen of the kitchen, right? Yep. You know, there's Amen. certain things you, you, you know, you do. And, mm -hmm. and there's certain areas of authority that you have. Very important and uh, we, I am, I depend a whole lot on common sense. Amen. I always thought it was a good thing, common sense. Yep. I know that it's illegal today in many of our universities. And, <laughs> Uh, we see it that it, it seems to be illegal in uh, the politics and public office. Hmm. And then I want you to go over. I was getting this morning, as I was getting dressed this morning, I was watching this old classic movie about the life of Oscar Wilde. Mm -hmm. Now, the events took place in uh, what is today a, a very liberal socialist Muslim uh, dominated Britain. But Britain during the life of Oscar Wilde was morally much cleaner and still holding to the King James Bible as the inerrant truth of our holy God. So to make a long story short, he was found to be guilty of the sin of sodomy and he was sentenced to two years in prison. And uh, the sentencing judge said for such a horrendous crime, you deserve a much longer sentence. Can you imagine that today? <laughs> For today, we get uh, the <laughs> they promote it. Mm -hmm. They embrace it. And here, that, that judge at that time said, for such a horrendous, a horrendous crime, something that God's Word, the Bible, calls an abomination. Amen. Turn over to Genesis chapter 18. And in Genesis chapter 18, starting in verse 16, we read, And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? By the way, this is a Christophany. Uh, as you, some of you may have heard, Esau, the Muslim, who's been calling in on a regular basis to the radio program. Mm -hmm. And uh, folks, Esau got his clock cleaned again Friday night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he happened to call in with, with both John and I were both there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Yeah, but he, he tried to take some verses out of Scripture, completely turn them around, oh, and yeah. apply to them. Uh, 
meetings which were not there at all. Exactly. But anyhow, here, as this is a Christophany, and of course one of the arguments that he wanted was that Jesus was a prophet, uh, and that they had, and they informed, but he wasn't the son of God. God has no sons, and that Islam is the only religion that wow. well, that holds to one God. Wow. And uh, again, like I said, we kind of straightened all you saw on that. Amen. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, that they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. And the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Their sin is very grievous. Mm -hmm. And folks, you need to boldly uh, pronounce that when... When they start talking about today LGBT and this and that, mm -hmm. to say that God's word, the Bible said their sin is very grievous. Amen. Mm -hmm. So one of the two is lying, and it's not God, right? That's right. Amen. I will go down now and, and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is coming to me, and if not, I will know it. And the men turned their faces from this and went down towards Sodom, but Abraham stood before stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Mm. Folks, would God destroy the righteous with the wicked? Nope. nope. He kind of gives some warnings in some places in Scripture. He gives you a warning in Revelation chapter 18, come out from amongst them, he tells you. Come out of there, come out of there, lest you suffer. In Revelation 18, during the tribulation period. Lest you suffer the judgment that God brings upon them. Okay. But he tells the righteous to come out. Now, the ultimate judgment, no. God would, uh, let me tell you, there's a whole lot of difference between heaven and hell. Amen. And God would never send the righteous to hell. Amen. God is a, a true and a just and a most merciful God. He will never punish you more than you deserve. Never. That's right. And He has compassion, and He will often reward us much more than we deserve. That's right. Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city, wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for fifty righteous that are therein, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, and be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am uh, but dust and ashes. Now, here, this is a Christophany. This is the Lord Jesus. This is the Lord Jesus appearing here. Prayer of venture, there shall be lack of fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure there shall be forty found in there. And he said, I will not do it, I will not do it for forty sick. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak, Peradventure there shall be thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty. Well, I'm going to tell you, old Abraham, man, this guy has got some. You know, to argue with the Lord that way. And he said, Behold, now I have taken up on me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there should be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. Yeah, I would say that too. <laughs> and I will speak yet this once. Peradventure ten should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. And the Lord went into his 
went on his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Well, here. Do you believe that there could be found ten righteous men in the city of San Francisco today? <coughs> I don't know. I know that there's been a number of ministries that have gone there to try to reach the homosexuals. A lot of them have left, been treated very, very shabbily. Some of them had the windows in their churches broken, and, uh, and the police stood by and watched as the church was surrounded by a screaming mob of homosexuals threatening the two pastors and their wives in the church. Wow. Wow. I had one of those pastors on my program. Uh, this church right here, where we're located right here, is what was used to be called the land of lakes because of the <coughs> abundance of small lakes. If you go up in a helicopter, this whole area has just got all kinds of small lakes all over the place. Praise the Lord. By a similar measure, Washington, D.C. could be called the land of corruption, scandals and lies, due in large part to the efforts of the Obama and the Clintons. Uh, it has become more